Welcome to the presentation about the MBS plugins. So I've been making plugins for a long time. I started 2001 because we, well, we had a need for more plugins than available on the market. We bought everything and then still needed more functions. So I started writing plugins in 2001. It's more or less my full-time job, so I may be the only one doing it full-time. It's a huge toolbox and we more or less added everything people ask for over 17 years. So that's the reason we got 60,000 functions. Um, it may not possible to print the manual, but <laughs> I hope you find what you what you're looking for. We do have 39 plugins. That's compiled C code, which extends Soldier with new classes. We also have um, kits, which is a collection of source code you can get. We have four kits for Mac and Windows, and six kits for iOS now. Also, I got a Quick Look plugin, which allows you to um, see the version of a project in the project icon on the Mac. And I got a SQLite extension, which uh, adds, I think, another 20 or 30 commands to SQLite. Also very handy. So let's take a look in deep. So first, this is a Quick Look plugin. So if you have a project file and you uh, hit the space key on a Mac, or you just take a close look on the file icon, you will notice the version number in, in the icon or in the preview. And I usually keep um, a project on a certain version of Sojo. So for small changes, I just uh, fire up this old Sojo version, make the change, rebuild, and send it to the customer. And only for bigger development steps, I uh, start with a newer version and see if it works. Sojo 2017 R3 will be uh, will have a 64-bit IDE, and for this, uh, most of your plugins may need to be updated for 64-bit. Um, most of the plugins out there are already supporting 64-bit, and um, if you have a 32-bit only plugin, it will not load. <coughs> On Windows, which. Can you point out which one is not ported? Which plugin is not Why, ported? mine are all ported. You, you said okay. most, I think. Yeah, you said most. So there oh, might, sorry. There might be some that were not. Well, there are plugins from other people. Okay, <laughs> my, my plugins are 64-bit safe. And on Windows, there are a couple of limits for how many DLLs you can load. And uh, if you use older plugins from me, you can't load them all. So I changed uh, the C runtime for my plugins for 17.5. So all the plugins load in the Windows IDE on 64-bit. And do not count to this uh, limit for 100 DLLs. So you can use all my plugins and uh, a few more, if you like, like the built-in ones. Just make sure you use the newer version if you plan to use the Windows IDE. Then uh, let's talk a little bit about the features we got in the last year. We do have a big number class. Um, I created it because um, the double type is not precise enough for more than 15 dig dig uh, digits. Digits? Digits. digits. So I, I thought about using a, it's a, a C library, implementing a number with, with whatever precision you want. And I configured it to be a 320-bit floating point number. So you have over 100 digits on precision. And in a couple of projects, we use it as a replacement for the currency data type. Because the currency data tab is internally 64-bit number, so it has a um, fixed four di digits after the dot and uh, 11 before the dot. 
and if you need more, like you need to use a currency which has uh, smaller increments than one ten thousandths, you need more position. So you can try it if you like. So for the MacBook Pros uh, touch bar, I got uh, a couple of functions. And you may have seen the article from Mark Zida about it. Um, also, you can try the example projects. So you can show a configuration sheet. You can offer uh, touch bar buttons for individual controls for each of your windows and for the application. And you can add your custom buttons to the touch bar, and then people can use them. We'll see whether Apple will deliver more Macs with touch bar over time, and whether this will be uh, successful in the future. Then I got uh, classes for Raspberry Pi. So all, all the plugins can be used on Raspberry Pi, which can be very handy to well, deploy a web app written in, in Sojo on a Raspberry Pi and use the plugins for whatever, PDF or SQL, whatever you need. And I made specifically for the Raspberry Pi, I made a camera class, which allows you to take pictures from the optional camera you can get. So you can um, enumerate which cameras are available on the system, what features they have. You can pick one of them or two. You can get a snapshot, so you can take a picture, or you can get a live feed in a, a lower resolution usually. So you can... Uh, show a live preview of the picture, and then have a button to take a snapshot. <clears throat> For Mac, I, um, you, may, you may know there's the address book classes for using the contact database. Apple deprecated the address book API, which is also used by Soto for their address book API. And uh, Apple recommends to use the contacts framework, and so I wrote us. 64-bit only classes for the context framework. So you can well, manipulate the context database. And the context uh, framework works better with multiple accounts, which the older address book API doesn't support really well. And we have the authentication possibility, so you can um, ask for Touch ID authentication. The user can use the Touch ID to well, authenticate or enter his password. And then uh, you can continue with whatever operation you want to do. In Dyna PDF, we got a couple of new functions, including uh, the optimizer, which is very handy if you have a couple of PDFs and you want to make them a little bit smaller. So we can shrink images in the PDF. Usually we only reduce images which are bigger than a certain size, so we don't shrink icons, we just take the images. We can recompress them with JPEG algorithm and then check if they are smaller and if they are actually smaller than the original picture, we can replace them. We can also fix errors in broken PDFs so if you have an application which created maybe a PDF with a, which shows an error message when you open it um, in, in a PDF viewer, you can fix it. And if there is any private data embedded in the PDF, like for InDesign, you usually have the original uh, document embedded, we can remove that. I have a couple of customers who simply pre-process all the PDFs they get <coughs> with the optimizer to make sure they are error correct. And then uh, some customers even convert everything to PDF A for archiving, also useful. So we got a couple of functions for the XFA, the XML based forms you can have in uh, PDFs. We also support, of course, the, the older form system with uh, form fields. but some people use uh, newer XML-based form definitions. We have uh, a function to rotate a template. This means you can import a page of a PDF document 
as a template and place it several times on a new PDF. And for that we also implemented the rotate function so you can rotate the template and then place it on, on your PDF. Some people use that for writing a software for the printing industry. So you have a big, big sheet of paper and you place there maybe 16 pages of a book and you print them all at once. We have the possibility to actually load the Dyna PDF library at runtime. So instead of using the version included in the plugin, you can load a newer version from the Dynaforms website if needed. We have a function to write style text. So if you have a text area control in Sojo and the user formatted his text, he can get this text one to one into your um, PDF document. And for the text extraction, we got a way to define uh, the rectangle you are interested in. So if you get invoices as PDFs and they do have an invoice number on the same spot every time, you can just extract the text from that rectangle and get the invoice number. We also can print PDF documents on Windows and we got newer functions to use a dialog from the system to select the printer and you can of course save and restore the settings the user made so you can maybe have him uh, set up it once and then automatically print with the same settings all the time. We can print the whole document in memory or we can print only one page. For example, you can um, use that to have uh, an application sitting somewhere, you press buttons and then it will send automatically documents to the printer. can be useful. For the Linux side, I did a few uh, things like the directory size function um, now works on <coughs> Linux 2 and it got much faster than it used to be. So. You can now use uh, the directory size function on Mac, Windows and Linux. And also the extended attributes class got updated to use Linux um, and not just Mac. So you can use it to store additional data in a file which is not part of the normal data stream of the file. Like for example the Dropbox application stores in an extended attribute the ID of the file in the cloud. And if you make a copy of that file on, a, on a, another computer, those metadata may get copied if it's a file system supporting this metadata, but if you just email the file, the extended attributes are lost. On Windows we got um, file streams, which is similar to the extended attributes, which allow you to store additional data with a file on Windows. Some people store maybe the thumbnail or some ID again on the file, so you can later read it back. I also got a Windows process class, which is my own implementation of a Windows shell. So you can run whatever applications you like, uh, pass in environment, or parameters and uh, com in contrast to the normal shell uh, here you can have um, a few additional parameters like a username password so you can run other different account on the computer. The functions for the HTML viewer got updated to support Chromium 3. The plugin is clever enough to um, internally check the version of the Chromium libraries used by Sojo and use different code passes for each function depending on the version. Uh, there are a few functions which are not available in the newer Chromium because they got removed but other new functions got added so be, be sure to check the manual before you complain about something not working in an older or in a newer version of Sojo. For the text area, I added a few additional um, properties, like for example, the subscript uh, property for selection, also superscript, and I think a few others. And 
as Sojo is using a standard Windows control for the text area, I could even add some more functions if needed. Um, we also have the functions to get RTF uh, data from a text area using the Windows functions. This gives you more options on the RTF than uh, the built-in Sojo functions. Yeah? Well, here I had a problem long ago. Since um, when you have the application ready for Mac <coughs> and Windows, it's hard to keep them both in sync. So you have an instance of your application on the network and you have in Windows and you have an instance, a Mac instance on the same network. Mm -hmm. So the RTF should be exactly the same. Okay. Otherwise you cannot exchange data between programs, right? So and that's still a pity with the text area control. It's 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 I didn't manage to get it RTF fully equal. Yeah, well, you can uh, you get RTF on a Mac using the Coco functions, yeah, on Windows using the Windows functions, and I think Sojo also has a third way to build it on their own, which um, doesn't support all the styles. But it's not a problem that it doesn't support all the styles, but exactly for that reason, it, it uses Windows uh, uh, API or Coco API. That makes that it's unusual to have it unusable to have it in an application which is for both platforms, you know? That's strange. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not completely equal. Some things get uh, mixed up. Mi uh, mixed up. Okay. That means if you look at the RTF, it's not exactly the same. It's, 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 and that's logical, of course. But that makes the text area is actually not my favorite control. <laughs> okay. So, well, a few people got happy because um, when you use the RTF functions I added for Windows, you can, for example, have images in your yeah. in your art, uh, text area and then save with the image. Uh, that works perfect. Yeah, but Apple decided to use a different format in RTF to... Yeah. Well, Apple, Apple uses RTF with attachments and Windows stores the uh, images inline. So, today we're going to see the HTML uh, alternative. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So next. For, for Windows, I also got uh, a font picking dialog, uh, so you can allow your user to select a font with the system dialog. I also have the same dialog for Mac available, if needed. We got a window properties class, so you can uh, set custom properties on a window in Windows. And there are a couple of keys defined by Microsoft with special meaning, including one to disable um, edge touch gestures in full screen mode, which can be useful. And you can also define the feedback settings for various touch events of the window. I also added Windows user notifications, so you can show a notification to the user. You can define an image and up to four lines of text. And Windows 10 currently will display three lines. No idea what Microsoft thought about this, but you can also get an event when the notification is showing or the user clicked on it. For the SQL plugin, I added the possibility to run the SQLite shell commands from within your application. This allows you to use the shell commands to batch import or export data with the features of the SQLite shell application within your app. So if you uh, want, you can do a CSV export of, of a table or import, just as if you would run the shell tool directly. We have uh, the SQL value MBS class to um, well, define a value uh, for blob. And we can directly uh, pass in memory blocks now which avoids any intermediate conversion to a string. You can also tell the plugin to read the file itself from a folder item on demand. So if it's a big blob file, we can read it in chunks uh, in the background. You don't need to do that yourself, as well as from a binary stream you opened. For the SQL 3 engine, uh, we can also load extensions. So if you got a nice SQLite extension doing a special function, like, for example, um, 
there was one to calculate the distance of two uh, geo coordinates for search so you can search people in a certain area and if you want to load that extension you can use uh, this method you can also set parameters to prepared statements with a dictionary or with variants so the plugin will automatically determine um, check for the required data type for the parameter and then ask the variant for the data in the data type. Is that SQL not handled? Is that on the Actually, the parameter setting works for all our database targets. Uh, and the auto detect of the bind type is also a nice feature. So if you use a prepared statement with my plugins, you don't need to call the bind type. And if you don't call, well, you can call it. But if you don't call it, we will automatically ask, uh, we will check with the SQL database what types they expect based on the fields you access. Or um, if, if that doesn't, uh, if the, if the checking. engine doesn't tell us, uh, we just check what type the variant has. <laughs> yeah, but checking will consume time. So it's well, actually, uh, when you give a prepared statement, it will need to be passed. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it will check for the types automatically. So yeah. we just ask um, the parameter objects which got generated what types they have, and then fill the parameters with the types they ask for. And then you can just cache the prepared statement itself. Right? Yeah. yeah. You can make a prepared statement once and use it for a thousand commands. Yeah. So For curl, we got a couple of additions. So we can, uh, well, as you may have seen, I was on the curl conference in Nuremberg last year, and I asked them about loading system certificates because we usually bought our own certificate chain. So you, I got a nice sample code to load the certificate chain from a Mac or from the keychain and for Windows from the certificate store. So you can use the certificates from the system to do your SSL connections, which gives you but more security than if you don't verify the certificates at all. But generally, I uh, prefer to pin the certificate. So I check with my server what certificate they use, and then only allow connections to that certificate. So nobody can just create a fake certificate and uh, fool me. I also got the curl n classes. There's a different set of classes. So we have curl MBS for load your own library, curl s for the static library, and curl n for the native library. <coughs> and those new curl n classes use the native SSL of the platform on Mac and Windows. So you can use secure transport on, well, on Mac and uh, the Windows implementation to secure your connections, but uh, using those native libraries doesn't allow for SSH because SSH depends on OpenSSL. But a couple of users are very happy to use uh, the default uh, security from Apple because they don't need to care about certificates at all. The system does it. But as you may know, your Macs are configured to trust certificates from the Department of Defense and China Mobile and a couple of other companies. So you may not want to trust all certificates in your keychain. I also added authentication for the Amazon Web Services with uh, AWS 4, HMAC, SHA-256 signatures. And I do have an example project for using this with Amazon S3, so we can upload data to an S3 bucket and download it. Curl is also working to support TLS 1.3 and HTTP 2, and I'm trying to get that as soon as possible in the plugin. So if you need that, please uh, let me know, so I can edit maybe quickly for you and make a, a new better. I also added the possibility to use curl instead of a TCP socket. So curl can do the part of the connecting through a proxy, through SSL, and you can then run 
run your own data transfers. So you can send data, you can receive data, and Curl will do the connecting part. For Mac on the WebKit area, um, you may know that the built-in HTML viewer from Soldier uses WebKit 1, the older version, which Apple deprecated uh, a couple of versions ago and is no longer really supporting well. They uh, favor to use WebKit 2, which, for example, runs all the web content in a separate process. So a uh, crashing JavaScript can't crash your application anymore. And if someone uh, breaks the sandbox, uh, they can't reach your application. So I made a new VK web view control, which uses the VK web view um, control from Apple to provide a WebKit 2. Uh, well, control. It supports a couple of newer um, features from CSS3 and a newer JavaScript engine than the well, WebKit 1 engine. JavaScript is run asynchronously, which is different to the existing uh, WebKit 1 implementation. So you usually run JavaScript and you get later an event when it's completed with the result. We also have events for page loading, so you get noticed if the user clicks a link or your page is loaded. A specialty of the control is that it falls back on 32-bit to the old WebKit library. So you can use it in your projects on both 32-bit and 64-bit with the same code. A couple of properties are new to the newer engine, so they only work in 64-bit. Eventually, Soldier will also move to use WebKit 2, but that's not on the near-term to-do list, I think. But at some point, Apple will force them to move. For using Microsoft Word, I got the Word file MBS class. You can load a Word document, a docx document, of course, and you can modify it by replacing tags with actual values, and you can save it as a new Word file. I have a few customers who use that to well, write reports as Word documents and send them to people to well, edit them. That's the reason they want to use Word instead of PDF. I would prefer to use PDF. Uh, for a company using uh, it to create invoices, I added the possibility to duplicate the table rows in the template, so you can have as many rows as you need. And then, of course, also added a function to remove a table row, so you can remove the last one, if you want. Or, or you can have more than you need, and then remove the ones you don't need. Then we have uh, a couple of Cocoa-based controls like the NS table control as the implementation of an, well, the, a list box from Apple. So we have uh, an example there. We also have the NS outline control, which is a hi hira oh. hierarchical, hierarchical. <laughs> a table control. So you can uh, use those on Mac to get uh, a more native looking table view with uh, a couple of custom features like having uh, independent row highs, so each row can have a different high. We do have an example project which uh, implements a very similar interface to the built-in list box. So you can just use add row commands, for example, to fill in data. But it's all for Mac only, so not for Windows. For the encryption plugin, I added um, an X509 uh, class for inspecting certificates. So you can see the metadata of the certificate and get the private keys or public keys. And for that, we also added a PK class, which allows you to take a look on those keys, like getting a text representation to display to the user. Besides uh, having AES encryption and Blowfish encryption, I also added two-fish encryption. So if you have data which needs to be encrypted using yet another encryption algorithm, yeah, please try it. 
For the JPEG plugin, I got a little glass JPEG movie, which we originally created to create movies from a, from a series of pictures on a Raspberry Pi. There is no QuickTime on a Raspberry Pi, and uh, so we created a movie file there, and then we could send it to a Mac and play it, uh, as well as play it in <coughs> VLC. So you just feed the JPEGs and you say create movie. Yeah, and then you can. Uh, on a Mac, of course, you can use the AV exporter to compress it to H264 or 65, so some MPEG encoding. Or you can use FFmpeg to transcode it to whatever you need. But the idea was to have a quick way to create a movie from a picture. On the network plugins, I added the NetSNMP class which allows you to, well, run as an MP request <coughs> and one client uses it to query the counters from a copy machine. So they can, over the network, just query well, various parameters, including the number of well, printed pages. For use of network uh, sockets on um, on iOS, I created a network kit. It's a wrapper to the uh, Bonjour classes for both Mac and iOS. So we can advertise our service in an iOS app on the network and have other iOS, app, iOS or Mac applications find our service. So you can uh, publish a service and you can browse for existing services <laughs> on the network. Yeah. Get the metadata, the IP, and connect. Question about that. Are there any plans to um, migrate that to Mac OS or Windows? Well, I do have Bonjour classes in the plugins for Mac and Windows, and also the AV, uh, well, the, the API for Linux too. It's a different name. A, 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 I forgot it. Yeah, something like this, yeah. So I do have the plugin classes, but as we can't make a plugin for iOS, I needed to implement it in in Sojo itself. Ah, okay. So this is the kit is written in Sojo, it's poor Sojo code, and can be used on iOS and MacOS. And the plugin can be used on Linux, Mac, and Windows uh, to do the same. There is a need uh, to have, for example, if you run a server on a Mac. So you can advertise uh, the service, and then your iOS applications can find it and can connect, or other way around. I mean, do you have that one already in the network plugin? Yeah. Oh. Well, the Linux one may be in the Linux plugin. Uh, <laughs> also, for the network kit, I got a wrapper for the NS connection classes for Mac and iOS which allows you to do uh, things like HTTP connections, FTP download, you can run synchronous or asynchronous transfers, and you can um, load to memory or to file, and this allows you to uh, well, stream, stream download files, or you can um, make HTTPS requests. Um, if you customize the NSURL request objects, you can send any request you like with custom header files, custom method, custom parameters. Um, yeah. It's a alternative to the built-in HTTP socket of Sojo. You can supply the HTTP headers, the body, the method. You can uh, decide about how caching is handled. And you can use pipelining with HTTP 1.1, which allows you to send several requests over one connection. And you can define whether you want to use cellular network or not, which can also be handy to only download if the user has Wi-Fi. I also made an audio player kit which is a wrapper for the iOS audio player class from Apple. 
It allows you to play any audio file uh, from memory or from, from disk. There are events to notify you when the playing finished. You can decide which audio channels to play on which channel of the device. You can uh, query the power, average and peak. You can change volume, pan and rate. And you can, of course, play, pause and stop and query the current position or jump to a position. We created it because the built-in sound class from Sojo is a little bit limited and we needed a little bit more control. Also for iOS, I created a UDP socket class. You can use it, of course, but it's, it's source code, so you can uh, use it on Mac too. You can create an UDP socket, you can send messages to one IP address or to uh, the podcast to all. You can listen on a certain port for incoming data and we also do have a data variable event uh, so you can react on incoming data as you need. And uh, we use that for a couple of uh, clients well, who broadcast uh, well, notifications through this local system, so you can uh, receive them. I also wrote a wrapper to the address book framework for iOS, where you can um, uh, query records for people, for companies, for groups. You can read, modify, delete the values. You can get images for people, so you can uh, well, use the address book to for example, if you have a business application, you may want to put all your contacts from your database into the contacts framework on, on, on your phone. So if a client is calling, you see his name in your calling screen. I also made an encryption kit for iOS because we had a need to encrypt data with more than what's built into Sojo. So we can do a couple of hashes we can get keys, we can uh, encrypt with AES, Blowfish, DS and a few others. It's hardware accelerated by Apple and you can do key wrapping if needed. So if you have a need to encrypt something on, on the device, you can do that. And I also made a wrapper for Zlib, so we can compress and decompress data on iOS, which uh, was handy and um, well, for Mac and Win uh, for Mac Windows Linux, you can also use the compression plugin for me to do the same. And I needed the compression and the encryption for a database connector, so I have a little um, proxy application running on a on a server, which connects to the databases, uh, and then the iOS uh, application can talk to this proxy application to send SQL requests and. All the data is both compressed and encrypted, so nobody can read it. Uh, that's it. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. I may have talked about this before, but PDFs, if you've got the need to index the contents, the text contents in mm -hmm. PDFs, it's the best way to do it. Well, usually uh, you can use Diner PDF or PDF Kit functions to get the text per page, for example. Then you can put in a database records to store the text for each page. Then you can make a query on the database to find all the pages for your documents who contain, which contain a certain text. Or if you need to have it a little bit more exactly, you can also use DynaPDF functions to extract all the text portions with coordinates. So you could even jump right to the page uh, and display it zoomed into that word if you need. You can also use the DynaPDF functions I have to highlight the word. So if you know you want to display a certain page and you know the word is there, you can use the highlight functions to have the plugin go over the page and put a, a yellow uh, box around all the words. 
Oh, yeah, the PDF page is altered, then you can render it, and if you don't save the changes, well, it keeps the original PDF. So I do have customers who split the PDFs into pages, so each PDF gets its own, you, you make a PDF document for each page, with yeah. only the page, and then you store the text in a database with a blob for the PDF, the text for the well, text you find, and then you can do the search, and then you can display this one page, and uh, just run the highlighter through it and render a, a picture of the page with with the highlighting. Does your word, sort of like your word uh, I don't think so. On a word document, um, we don't have uh, a way to render the view, so you still need Word for that, or you can use um, the built-in functions from from Apple, like text edit. You can, or uh, the NS attributed string class can load a Word document. Or uh, there you could also run the highlighting and then say print to PDF and. Uh, Get a similar effect. And it seems that, that the API is from uh, LibreOffice, or how is it called? Yeah, OpenOffice or LibreOffice Open uh, yeah. can also be used to print a Word document to PDF. Yeah, and you can pass the words that are in it. Yeah, but uh, well, if you have a media database and you get Word documents, you could run them through LibreOffice or through other tools to get a PDF from them, and then you can process the PDF. I was thinking more of extracting the words. Uh, for the word uh, class, we can also extract you the text of the document, which is useful for the well, full text search. Right. But we can't just tell you on which page it will add up because that's determined when, when the page is rendered by word. Uh, and I can't re redevelop the, well, the word the page layout functions of Word. <laughs> it's Just going back to a portion of what we've said. Am I able to display a PDF, and if there's certain text, say, that I'm searching for, that I can get it to highlight that in the PDF? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I need that for another application. <laughs> well, it was part of the... We had a feature for a long time to replace words in a, in a document, and then we had the idea, why. Well, Instead, we can find them. Yeah. Instead of replacing them, we just put an, an annotation, a, a highlight annotation on top of them. So the text turns yellow or whatever color you choose. And then we can use the Dynapedia functions to render the page as a picture and display the picture to the user. You can, of course, just save the page and load it in a, an HTML viewer to have a, well, interactive PDF control. Yeah. You can use a, a PDF kit control I have uh, to display a PDF too. So mm -hmm. user can zoom in or uh, save the PDF, print the PDF, whatever. How is the integration with the Book Team's new uh, format of text control? So the uh, Book Team says I have a new rich text control and he had, of course he advises using Dyna PDF. Uh, now you have to uh, check with him exactly. I think his shorts library for reporting does use Dyna PDF to output, and for yeah for the text formatting control, I think it's on the to-do list. Oh, okay, well, that's it. To support Dyna PDF, and if I remember correctly, he just said it could be done, and I offered him to assist if needed. Because it's selling PDF. Yeah, well. <coughs> the soldier community is small, and I would expect over the Omega bundles a lot of people got it already. So, anyone interested in PDF probably has the plugin anyway. So, I mean, that's, we could ask some statistics. Who of you does have a soldier Pro license? Hands up. So, okay, yeah, that's not. nearly everyone. <coughs> well, we got a discount co code, so. <laughs> Get it. Uh, who of you does have Dyna PDF plugin? No? Okay, not everyone. That gives you a possibility to use another coupon code. <laughs> so, yeah.
<laughs> well, originally uh, I wrote the SQL plugin to overcome a few well, bugs or limitations in the official plugins. For example, if you use the official MySQL plugin, you get back all the strings without text encoding. That's very annoying. You have to always use define encoding or convert encoding to make sure you use always UTF-8 to not get into trouble. The MBS plugin uses the Unicode APIs for the database connectors. They all do have Unicode APIs, so we can simply tell them here's the Unicode text, and then, for example, with MySQL, the database itself can be storing the tables in a different encoding, but the, con the database connector will actually translate for you. So we send Unicode over the cable, and the database will store it as Unicode or as ESO Latin or whatever, and will do the translation on the fly. And that's much more convenient than. And also, I got a couple of other features uh, long before Soldier could uh, read blobs and chunks. We had it, or we have multi-threaded features, so you can um, run queries in the background on a different preemptive thread. I do have uh, a lot of convenience functions, like, let's see later, prepared statements with uh, named parameters, or pass all the parameters as one dictionary, or whatever. And, on, um, ah, and I do have 14 database types supported. <laughs> yeah, I know. And on Mac, um, supported SQL Server, you know. Yeah, you can get from a Mac to Microsoft SQL Server. Do you need a drive? You just need to have a little library file to point to, which you can embed in your application. So, no installation needed. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Same yeah, usually. <coughs> Linux, for whatever reason, I couldn't get it down. Yeah, with Linux, uh, the problem is uh, you can compile the free TDS library with four bytes per character or two bytes per character, and you have to match whatever I used. <laughs> <laughs> and if your distribution comes uh, with, with such a library which has a different setting for compiling, then it will not work. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> but I once made it work for a client who uses a Linux box uh, for the timing of, a, of the workers. So they come and press a button, I'm here, and then it will put the timestamp on the Microsoft database. So for him, it worked. <laughs> I use your files MBS routine to quickly look at a folder, a directory. And grab the information from it. It's great. <coughs> you mean the file um, list MBS? The file list for class? Fi file list yeah. MBS, sorry. Um, is, but I also use that in a routine recursively. If I give it a folder and I want to search not just yeah. one level but or, infinite yeah. levels deep, my routine goes off and does it and collects information. Is there any way that I can use? file list MBS to be recursive? Uh, there's a constructor to take a file list and the index number of the children. Yeah. Uh, to get maximum speed you have to avoid using folder items. Folder items are slow. So don't please get a folder item and then pass into the constructor again. Um, that will destroy all the speed advantages you have. <laughs> So please use the constructor to pass in uh, the parent file list and the index of the item you want to get. And then under the hood it will avoid the folder item and just build the new path and create. Yeah. So I, I still have to have a method that calls it recursively. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I, I, I didn't know there was that, That's what I do. Well, technically I could of course make a recursive version of the plugin myself, but well, uh, there's not much much speed to gain 
compared yeah. to you doing it. Uh, I, I will keep with what I have done. It's just if I can take my code and you know, replace it with one line of your code, then that's <laughs> better from my perspective.